All right, now let's get into a little Q&A and we'll go from there. Let's see. <laughs> Sass. I hope ADA goes below 20 cents. So I'll be heavily accumulating those levels. Yeah, that's what I did. I think it'll do pretty well. It's one of those that I DC actually. Ah, uh, oh Lord, sweet Mary and Joseph. I saw a video on TikTok about people pumping Terra Classic and I almost had an aneurysm for all this stupid F people thinking it would be a good idea to invest in Classic. Hey, not that I'm gonna knock it, but that's what they did with Dogecoin and it was very effective. It was very effective. And Dogecoin, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it hit like 67 cents at some point. That was back in the day when Elon went on uh, Saturday Night Live. And they said, don't sell into a dollar. But of course, everybody sold. And uh, so don't look past that. So people will, people will. I mean, JH, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Trust me. I'm not like, oh, we go buy Ter Terra Luna, Luna Classic. But don't... Don't dispel the power of community. That's all I'll say. Do I put Mitch in my meatloaf? Of course. What am I, an animal? Of course I do. Rob, what's your opinion on metaverse projects being front runners in the next market cycle? I don't know about metaverse. I would go more towards gaming. Eh, I think gaming's got more of, of a utility and a function. Metaverse, eh, I don't know. Didn't work out too much for, uh, uh, for Zuck and his projects, but whatever. Uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> Hi, Rob, who is this Ben that you're talking about? Ben from another Cryptoverse. He's just, I think Ben's buying a little bit, but he's like, I'm not touching alts. Uh, Jay Young Chow. Do you watch baseball? There's a history correlation that if the Phillies win, then our economy will crash. Phillies World Series winner for 2022? <laughs> I, doubt, I doubt that. We're in October, but we'll find out. Uh, Capital Con says it correctly. Dan's not your dad, not financial advice. Very true. Uh, quality content, thank you. Sup, what's up? And then look, I know it was like not the most um, positive video, but and I know people want to get that hopium in there. But... Um, I just tell you the truth and just how I see it. I don't like, I don't see, uh, there's, there's, there's bear runs, bear runs, bear relief rallies uh, abound. Those will happen. So just stick around. And you know, if you want to take profits on the way, I would definitely do that. I just don't think we're going to see Bitcoin hitting all time highs by December. Like some people have said, that's ridiculous. And again, I just look at it and go, this is what I always keep thinking. You want to know what's in the back of my head? This is what's in the back of my head. I'll show you. This is always in the back of my head. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. So Cardano. I started to, to accumulate Cardano. Actually in 2007. Now, 2018 is when I really started, around February. And I'm doing it, I'm still doing it today. And back then I was probably, how much was I spending? Like 25 bucks a week? It wasn't that much, bucks a week. And like, again, you, you don't have to be a billionaire. I mean, if, you, if your goal is to be a billionaire, you could probably have to spend a lot more money, but that's not my goal. And, um, I just take a look at it and I just think, this is what I did last time. Let's do the same thing again. It worked out pretty well. And if you, first of all, pull this up. I always, this is what I'm always going in my mind. You won't time the top perfectly. You just won't. But I mean, if you put 25 bucks a week and if you could time the top, you know, you would have invested 4,600 bucks and you would have got 162,000. That was your, how much you could cash out. It's pretty good. It's really good. And then let's do something else. And then th throw me, for everybody in the chat, throw me some, some cryptos you want to see over time. And I'll show you. Let's do, let's do Ethereum. I was, I was doing those too as well. So 25 bucks a week. Stupid thing. 
uh, you would have, if at the very top, you would have invested almost 5,000, but you would have had $83,000. But remember, you got to get through all this stuff, like all the negativity and all the people telling you that crypto is going to go away and it's going to die. And that's not happening. The government's not going to let the crypto die because you know why? They want to tax the living tar out of you. And they don't want you to have money in your bank account because they can't get capital gains tax on that. So they want you to invest in things. And that's that. So let's see. What about boo, boo, boo. Binance coin? I, that's the one I didn't, I never did. Holy smokes. Um, wow. Same. Wow. Well, you would have invested like 40,000 and you'd have $170,000. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right now because I know it could probably go lower, but whatever. Now let's go into like some degen stuff. Not that degen. Polka dot. If I did 25 bucks a week, a thousand, well, that's pretty good actually. I guess it's not that good. Let me hit the calculate button. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Invested sixteen hundred and balance was seven eight thousand. No, not that great. What about oh avalanche? Hmm. There's something wrong here. 3,000. Huh. I think I'm doing this. Let's see. 25 bucks weekly, 2018. I guess so. Well, it always depends on what you do. It's better than just having your, your money sit around in the, in the uh, savings account. So that's what I'm always thinking about. Just so you guys know. All righty. Where are we? S less. Oops, I missed one. Now, meme, hello. Makes some time, sure. Norman says, is the Fed pivoting? No, I don't think so. so being, I mean, it could. And again, like what I said, like, like I said before, even if they pivot, I think we still have some downside. Again. Just look at these numbers, but it, they're a little bit different back then. But there was still high inflation. So even though we do it, we still got to, and if, if everybody's right, if most people are right, where the, the people say that the Fed's doing too much and they're raising the rates too aggressively, then we still have to go through that time frame. That's what it is. I'm okay with that. Bad day for us people. How is the market doing? I thought it was... Uh, I thought it was rallying for some reason. Let's see. S&P 500. Oh, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that does make sense. So the S&P 500 is down a little bit. Not too bad though. What's the NASDAQ doing? I would assume it's tanking, but you know, wrong before. Eh, not that bad. It's down 0 0.05, so pretty much stagnant. And I got to tell you, one thing that gives me a little bit of a glimmer of hope is that, you know, last month, as much as the traditional market went down, I mean, Bitcoin was only down 0.2% for the month of September. So it's holding on there. Do you have any thoughts about AMP? No, I'm, I feel sorry for AMP and those other currencies or those other projects that were labeled as securities and that. Ah, uh, in that court case by the SEC, I think that kind of killed him for a bit. Hmm. The truth and facts are all I want. That's good because a lot of people don't want that. Uh, <laughs> I think if we DCA the solid projects like ADA, Bitcoin, Polygon, we're going to be all right. Come next board. Potentially, just that's why it's like so important just to keep on these things. Because like in the, if, 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 if you want to set it and forget it, that's a good strategy for like the S&P 500 because over time it usually goes up, does pretty well. Don't really think about it. But in crypto, 
Like there's all these different nuances. So you really got to stay on top of it. But when, but there's a reward at the end, not for all projects. Just know that if you invest in 10, eight will probably bite it. The ninth one might be okay. And the 10th one might be big. Uh -huh. Jay says, can we see you jump in that green screen if Bitcoin 100K? Yeah. Once it has 100K, I'll definitely do that. <laughs> Hi, Rob. I got two tickets for the Bitcoin conference in Edinburgh. Hey, that sounds fun. Uh, I got a ticket for you. I will not make that. I'll be in Puerto Rico. Actually, no. I'll be in Houston next couple weeks or next week, and then I'll be in I'll be in Puerto Rico for that. Wow, Jade is pretty. That's pretty uh, aggressive. I don't think I'd say that. What? Where is, I can't find it, mad cow. All right, all right. Soul and Gala, I own both of those. Even though there was some, some lag time. Oh, I thought it was super positive. Yeah, me too. Uh, Hotsky says Cardano staking is literally the best liquid staking there is. Other layer ones don't come close. So it's security eligibility and feasibility. Ease of, ease of use, I'll give you that for sure. It's super easy and very, very, um, I tell you, if Cardano knocked out of the park with, with uh, staking, they just did. Have fun with slashing rewards and all those things for Ethereum. I'm not like... I'll stake all my crypto or most of them. I'm not doing that with Ethereum. I don't trust that whole process. It's, it's a waste. I even went through a video. I got about halfway through and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. And that was it. I know people are like, but it's so easy. Sure. Uh, too phantom. No, oh, maybe that's it. It was not until I was 19. So here's a great question. Connor says, Rob, do you think Bitcoin will remain as correlated to the NASDAQ and S&P next cycle? No. Uh, well, it depends. Here's, here's where it becomes uncorrelated. Uh, when it doesn't become a speculative asset. I know people will say, oh, how dare you say that Bitcoin is a speculative asset because there's so much use case and El Salvador is using it and, and I use it on my card and da, da, da. Everybody calm down. Look, Bitcoin will probably be huge. I just don't know how many years it's going to take. And uh, who knows? It could be the world reserve currency. I don't know. But right now for people to say that everybody's using it and it's a global phenomenon, it's not. And it's a horrible store of value. If you're talking about the short term, it's all about time horizons. If you're talking about a store of value over 20 years. Yeah, I guess I see your point, right? But if you're in a third world country and you make 400 bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, and you put that in Bitcoin, and it goes down 20%, that's not a good store of value. I hate to tell you that. So I would go do stable coins. So really it comes out of this. Once we actually see real world use case utility for the masses, then uh, it won't be a, a uh, speculative asset. And then we'll start to decouple. But I don't think it's going to happen until. I could be wrong. Oh, no, Jarky's back. Jarky, thank you for giving everybody those uh, memberships. Everybody loves you. Everybody. Leo says 75 points or 50 points. Mm, tomorrow, I don't see how the Fed goes. Yeah, PPI number is a little bit hot, but we're going to go 50 basis points. But if they do go 50 basis points, expect a big fat rally because everybody's talking about 75. So... I personally think 75. I don't see how they could go 50. I don't think 100 basis points, but I'm rooting for them to do that because I'm a masochist and I like pain. <laughs> Tesla, I'm out for dinner. Big dogs, hey, everybody. Jarky the legend, that's right. Respect. Hmm. Oh, it's a great question. 
TRT community, I like that. It's a good one. If the SEC labels everything besides Bitcoin ETH as securities, will that shut the other alts down like Aiden Dot? No. And this is what everybody, this is my, my thinking. First of all, securities, we buy securities all day long over on Robinhood. They're called stocks, but they're just registered with the SEC. That's the difference. That's all really it is. But to register with the SEC, it takes time and it takes paperwork and it takes money, which some of these projects do actually have. Some don't because they're startups and the time constraints. So this is what, how, what I see happening. Most crypto is trash. I'll say it again. Most crypto is trash. And a lot of these products need to go away. I just have to tell you the, my, the truth, that I, what I think. And I think with, if Gary Gensler and the SEC and the CFTC and they come down and they go, okay, you guys got this, we got this. And here's what we believe to be securities and what we believe to be commodities. And not that they can do that. It's Congress's job. They just suck at doing everything. <laughs> so once they pass, pass the law, which is a great law, we talked about this yesterday, Senator Lummis from uh, Wyoming, and it, it, it lays out what would be considered a security and a commodity and, and what the SEC and the CFTC will do. Once they get that part down, they say, okay, fine. Bitcoin, Ethereum are commodities, whatever. Everything else is security. So now these projects, they're going to have to go and register with the SEC. So they try out their lawyers, they try out their paperwork, they try out their money. And they just get it registered, however long it takes. Maybe there's a fast track option. I don't know. But a lot of these, other, these smaller companies or projects are like, hey, we can't afford that. We don't have the time frame. We're running out of money. And of course, you can't get them on American exchanges. You can get them on decentralized exchanges. But look what happened with XRP. You know, you can get XRP a anywhere. You can get on, well, Chloe, you can get it on uh, other exchanges. But there's a reason why it fell because there's, the loss right now with Ripple. So what they're going to do is these smaller projects are going to die or the bigger projects are going to pull a Facebook, meaning they're going to say, hey, we like what you guys are doing over there. We're going to absorb you and your developers. We're going to do a buyout. That's what Facebook does all the time. It's the only reason why Facebook is relevant. They're like, hey, Instagram, we like pictures. We're going to absorb you. Hey, WhatsApp, we don't really have that, that, uh, that type of functionality. We like what you're doing over there with, with telecommunications and, and, and the mobile app. We want to buy you and so on and so forth. That's what's going to happen, I think, with these bigger projects. They're just going to start to absorb and buy these smaller projects and become bigger. They're already registered. They're under the umbrella of the Cardano, the polka dots, the you know, near protocol and whatever else. And that's what I think will happen. And that's what I think has to happen. And I'll be okay with that. Consolidation of efforts. Sometimes that actually works out. Okay. Oh, Jupiter. Jupiter lays it out there. CPI will be higher than estimated tomorrow. 75 basis points times three incoming next year meetings. I don't know if I can say that. But that's interesting. Interesting concept. <laughs> Bobby shouts, Bobby, I did get your, your question about um, does CoinLedger still integrate with Voyager and Celsius? I have, a, I have that question out myself because I use, we talked about this yesterday about the tax software. I use CoinLedger and I integrated with, I was able to integrate today with uh, Voyager, but only until it was January 2022. So I have a, I have a, query out to those guys and see what's happening. I'm not for sure. And Bobby says, Rob, thanks for the content, but I'm finding it hard to get excited about crypto with the IRS in the future. So here's what you got to remember. Yeah, I know the IRS sucks. And uh, look, even, like, even though I moved to Puerto Rico, all the crypto that I bought before, I still had to pay capital gains tax because you don't start to do anything until you move there, which I didn't move there until 2021, late, whatever. So let's just say, let's use that example I, I did with, with Cardano, right? And it was, let's say it was $500,000. Okay, you made $500,000 off, off of 5,000, whatever it was, I forgot. Let's just say 100,000, heck, who cares? So you have 100,000, you, you keep it for over a year, your capital gains tax is roughly 20%, 20 roughly, right? So yeah, you gotta give the government 20,000. Yeah, that sucks. 
Actually, it's not. Because you, it's your initial investment, 5,000 minus 100,000. That's 95,000. 20% 20 of 95,000, you're looking at 18, $19,000. So 19,000 roughly. And then you get to keep uh, $81,000 and you get to give, you get to give, you have to give the government 19,000. Hey, worst things out there to do, right? So I understand IRS isn't my favorite thing either, but we all got to pay the piper. But then you got to take a look at it. Like, what can I do with this money? What do I do? What can I do with it? Maybe I put into other assets like uh, real estate, which you know I can use as tax deductions along the way uh, for the, the depreciation value. That's why I love real estate so much. So I am always talking about it. And of course, I can do a lot of things with, with real estate. I don't have to sell the house. I can do long-term rentals, find a renter, go there. Or maybe I want to do short-term rentals. And maybe I don't even want to do, deal with the hassle. Maybe I just hire a company, a property management company, and they take 10, 15, 20%. I don't have to do anything. So that's where things get interesting. Just saying, there's, much, there's many options out there. Uh, this is a good one. Brad says, the last 13 to 14 years have been generally great returns post-financial collapse. Yes. All the products you checked, he's saying in the, after the point. Yes, that's true. I messed that up. We'll see what they're like post-Black Swan. Yeah, we'll see. It's a good point. And Brad's... I will add on to Brad's comment, which is this. Some of the projects that you're investing into right now are not coming back. They're not. I'm going to show you something. There's this website. I'm going to find it. Yes, got it. It's called Coin Market Cap. I use Coin Gecko, but whatever. Coin Market Cap. I think Binance owns that now. But you can take a look at historical data snapshots. So let's just see. Well, here. Remember that the the four year cycles I was talking about? July two thousand thirteen. Let's just go to two thousand thirteen, just for giggles. That was like the all-time high. Here's what the top cryptos were. Bitcoin. It's always been Bitcoin, first of all. That's why people invest into it. Number two is Litecoin. Namecoin, I have no idea what that is. Peercoin, I don't know. Nova, Primecoin, Feathercoin, Terracoin, Devcoin. Freecoin, digital, you, you get the, the picture. None of these are around, except Litecoin, which I don't understand why. <laughs> Double loons. <laughs> so... Now let's jump forward. Let's go in 2017, 2016. Actually, you know what? Let's go 2016, December 18th, real quick. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin again, Monero, Ethereum classic, what? Dash, remember Dash? Ooh, Dash was big. Made safe coin, Still, oh man, I remember Steam, it was the best. It's supposed to be the next great thing. Nem, Augur, Factum. Dogecoin's still there. Look at that. Waves, Stellar. I don't know what economy is. Lisk. I remember Lisk. Ardor, Bitcher. Zcash, still around. Bitcoin, Emmercoin, Golem. Oh, that was a big one. Let's go down then to 2017, December 17th. Bitcoin, Ethereum. <laughs> Bitcoin, Cash. That's number three. No way. XRP, Litecoin again. IOTA was number seven. Dash was number eight. NEM was nine. I can't believe that. Bitcoin Gold, woo, number 11. EOS, oh, Beardy. Remember those days? That was beautiful. NEO, <laughs> Qtum, BitConnect, the biggest scam out there. Populous, only say go. So when I do all these things, just remember this when you're investing into the next hot thing. It could be. It really could be. Uh, but more often than not, it's pretty risky. So just hedge your bet uh, and go from there. That's what I would do. I can't give you financial advice, but just remember that the things that were hot back then sometimes are nowhere to be seen now. Ah, Jing Chow. Saw your tweet on French people with oil gas issue on Twitter. Did you get any response from them to verify the diesel crisis? 
Yeah, so some people said they were driving through France as they were going to wherever they were going. And he said that that was true. But other people said, no, it's not as bad as, as what people think it is. Remember, there's sensationalism. Sensationalism sells. There's also a strike, apparently, uh, in the natural gas uh, refineries or wherever in France. So uh, that could be that could definitely play a, a role in that. All right. Hello <laughs> from the Brenton, Florida construction site. Hello, Jeff. Uh, Bobby shouts, staking Theta and T-Fuel. Thank you, Jarky. Appreciate it. Much respect. Always here. Jarky, you are awesome. When Ranch. I'll get to the next one, Jeff. Yeah. Ojafar says, it's, Ethereum is easy until you get slashed. I don't know how long that, how much it does. Um, yep. This is true. You just got to start gaining weight. It's very hard for me to do that, though. Yeah, Jared's is a good point. The best time for 100 basis points was two or three months ago. You know what? That's a good point. If they would have done that, I think we would have probably gone a lot farther. Ah, oh, man. SEC is saying every NFT is a security as well. Hmm. Wouldn't doubt it. But everything's a security to, to Gary. When you're a hammer, everything's a nail. So... <laughs> Jeff says, not 100% sure, but I think Alex lied to us. Hey, I'm also going to have uh, two heavyweights in the Celsius space, uh, Aaron Bennett and uh, Tiffany. Uh, they're mostly, Aaron's got a great YouTube channel, and Tiffany's been getting some good information about what's going on with the Celsius project and talking to ex-employees. I'm going to have them on Sunday. I'll try to get that video out. And I just, wanted to give, I just want them to get us up to speed because if you're on Twitter, a lot of fragmented stuff that's out there and the things that I just, I see, I think people need to know about. And I want to put this in a timeline and a coordinated manner and then talk about Simon Dix's plan, which I think is probably the best plan we're going to have and go from that. My life is over. VGX Rob. Yeah, so I know, I'm gonna guess. It was all because of Voyager and how they probably, you probably stuck a bunch, a lot more money than you thought you were gonna need and you put it over there. Happens. I had a good chunk on Celsius. I think people already, people already know how much I put over there. Also on Voyager. And um, yeah, you know, th I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, a, let's take a step back and tell you this. In 2017, when I went way overboard on crypto and it crashed 90 something percent, most of it, or 85%, 85% for Bitcoin and 95% for alts, I put a lot of money in there. And I was going through, I was being sued from my business for uh, trademark infringement. Real pain in the A. And uh, it took me three years to get through that. And I had to pay a bunch of money. And it was rough times. Uh, I must admit, it was rough times. And I thought, damn it, I'm never going to get through this. I'm never going to get through this. But as time goes on, a little bit of a break. Thankfully, I had good people around me. And I realized that money wasn't the end-all be-all. I know right now it sucks. But there are better days ahead of us. It's just that it's going to take time. If you stick around, it's just like the army. If you just stick around and show up, good things happen. Just you got to keep showing up. I know it's not the best thing, the greatest thing, but it does get better. And I got to tell you, in 2017, I was pretty pretty low for a bit. and uh, But it did work out, especially after that lawsuit. Whoosh. So here we are. <laughs> 40 minutes in, how do I get the late notification? I'm sending it to you. Don't sue new YouTube. They will, never, they will not... Uh, notify you. You know, I take a look at how people find these videos. Uh, five point something percent is through no notifications. Five percent. Forty percent are in suggested videos. And the other one is just search. So like, that's just how it goes. 
Yeah, Dash of Crypto. Oh, that's a good one. Drew says, Robin, your upcoming solar videos. I'm not going to put a video out, but I'd like to get into that more. Please include the 2023 federal tax credits in the cost calculations. I will do so. I predict Doge and SHIB will ironically do quite well since neither of them really passed the Howey test. Yeah, it's debatable. Yeah, capitalist. Thanks, Jarky. In your opinion, will sweat moon? No. Uh, sweat, the cryptocurrency, uh, the platform, the great app I've been talking about, uh, it will not moon anytime soon. It'll probably drop farther. <laughs> Just will, just like everything else is going to drop, I think. But I think it'll do really well as time goes on. Look, it's actually a, a, an app that you can actually use and has utility. So again, uh, you can download the app, links in the description. You walk a little bit and they give you these sweat. And if you're outside the United States, um, you get sweat and you get the, the crypto itself and you put in a crypto wallet. But if you're in the United States, it's like a rewards program. And you can use that to buy like, Ah, goofy little things. Like I got some some headphones. That was pretty cool. And go from there. So uh, I think it'll work out. Just It's going to take some time, just like everything else. But I still believe in it. And I'm still locked up for another 11, 10, 11 months. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I forgot about that. There's always a strike in France. That's true. Yeah, 50% Bitcoin, 20% ETH, and the last one was in gambling random alts. That's a good way to do it. From George over at Cryptos R Us. That's the way. Will the next bull run be the last big one? Nah. Everybody thought this 2021 was going to be the, the last big one. But I think if you can just take a look at the institutions that are lining up and buying, I don't see that at all. And especially with the amount of attention that it gets from the U.S. government and all governments for crypto. <laughs> BJX Rob, get Steve on and light his ass up. I'll see if he can come by. I don't think that's going to happen. We'll see. Gensler works for the devil. Well, if you think that the government is a the devil, then you actually have a good point. Ugh. VGX Rob says, I invested 40K on the VGX on via credit card balance transfers. Oh, now the 0% promo periods have ended. I'm dying for interest. That's a heavy interest. That's for sure. Hmm. That's why I was hoping there would be a better, better play than that, than the FTX. And another thing about the FTX deal, I need to, from, again, what I saw, it looked like it was all cryptos at 72%, not excluding VGX. That's a good point. That means baseball cards are securities too. Hmm. Hang in there, bro. To VGX, Rob. Find a credit assistance program to help you get out of debt, write stuff off, live lean and get better. Get better for sure. Let me... Ah, see, SD says I get notifications all the time. Great. Voyage Digital News. Nah, but I should get some people on here to talk about that for sure. <laughs> I will do that. I will do an update. Right now we're waiting for uh, people to vote and uh, people to vote on that uh, FTX acquisition of Voyager assets. See what it is. I need to take a deep dive into that. Ben's still waiting for a 99.99% Bitcoin down for buying alts. Ah, oh, look at that. I found by checking my subscription feed. That makes sense. Yeah, Jeff says, I'm with Simon. Simon Dixon, as smart as he is, I don't feel so stupid because Alex tricked him. Dude, Alex tricked all of us. We all got tricked. We all got duped. And if you, because... Celsius doxed all of us, so everybody knows how much we have on there. So not surprising. And everybody knows now I have six figures on there. Oh, that's right. Nah, 
What are you going to do? And uh, Simon's got 10 million on there. So I don't feel so bad. But, you know, Simon's an OG Bitcoin investor. And he's done a lot of different things with a lot of big companies like uh, the Coinbase and the Bitfinex and all those things and his company, Bank of the Future. And even he got duped. So I know when people say due diligence and things like that, sometimes you just got some good swindlers. And that's all I can tell you. And one more thing, that sell squeeze thing that's going on, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. The only thing they're doing is exit liquidity for the Mashinskys. That's it. Oh, said it. That's right. I could be wrong, but I don't see it. And then lastly, uh, unless the financial system goes off the rails, even then I think we'll try to patch things instead of reversing. It's very potentially true. That's what the financial system is. Just one big Band-Aid on another Band-Aid on another Band-Aid to see what, how far we can get. Because right now, if you just look at it, it's not looking too good. I'm surprised that the uh, S&P 500 NASDAQ has held up as strong as it has. I don't, I don't even know what the market is in crypto right now. Because I just stopped looking. I'll look in 2024. Maybe that'll be a good time. And that's it. So look, everybody, there's a road ahead of us. And there's two ways we can look at it. The ultimate doomsday, or just to get through it, trudge through. When you're going through hell, just keep going. Winston Churchill, right? And that's what's going on right now. Not a big deal. We'll get through it. It's going to take some time. So that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all that good stuff. But that is all we have. So I appreciate everybody sticking with me. I appreciate you for coming by. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios for today.